Time now to go inside out with our NFL insider, Connor Hughes. And the goal for the Jets this offseason was to add protection to their offensive line and add another playmaker to help Aaron Rodgers and that Jets anemic offense. They've addressed the O-line, but Connor, what can they continue to do on the offensive side of the ball? Well, I'm told that they are continuing to monitor the free agent market at receiver. This was always something that they wanted to dabble in. They just wanted to dabble in it at their price. That was very specific. Uh, we talked about it before free agency began, that this was going to be something where Joe Douglas had his price that he was willing to pay players. And much like his first four seasons as this team's general manager, he was not going to go over that specific price for specific players. That's why he bowed out of the Calvin Ridley sweepstakes you saw that massive contract that he got from the Tennessee Titans, that just wasn't a price that Joe Douglas was willing to pay. But now he's going to be able to survey the receivers that are still there with Gabe Davis gone and a couple of others. But there's somebody like Mike Williams, who the Chargers let go. He was a player uh, that the Jets were very high on two years ago before he re-signed with L.A. That could be something that they might get involved in. Again, he's had some injury issues, which could drive his price down. Uh, we know that Aaron Rodgers and Odell Beckham Jr. have a relationship. That could be something. Garrett Wilson has a nice relationship with Taj Boyd. All of these players, they haven't signed yet, which means that they might have been asking for more than they were worth and more than teams were willing to give them. Now, I think, is where you could see the Jets start to pounce. But they are absolutely monitoring that market at receiver, just trying to find the right place where they can get the most bang for their buck. All right, now the Giants currently have three quarterbacks under contract after signing Drew Locke. Can we expect them to go into camp with the trio of Jones, Locke, and DeVito? No. Because there's going to be a quartet, I think, right? That's four. I, I, I think I didn't make yes. sure I get my math there right. But this does not uh, rule the Giants out at all of drafting a quarterback. I, I checked in on that right after they signed Drew Locke because that was my thought, right? I mean, they gave him $5 million uh, guaranteed. So is this it for them at quarterback? And I was told absolutely not. All options are on the table at number six. And I still think that at the end of the day, the Giants will select a quarterback there. Now, uh, because they traded that second round pick for Brian Burns, they don't necessarily have uh, as much draft capital as they did before to trade up to one of those top three spots, although they have made their calls to inquire about going up to one of those three selections. From my understanding, those picks, they are not for sale. It is going to go quarterback, 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 some variation of Caleb Williams, Drake May, and Jaden Daniels with those first three selections of the Bears, Commanders, and Patriots. The Giants will then be left with the next quarterback, which I think is going to be J.J. McCarthy. Oh, if they take J.J. McCarthy with the sixth pick, that'll be interesting. All right, Connor Hughes, we'll have a few, time, few weeks to, just, to debate that. Thanks for joining us here on Honda Sports Night.